Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to be painting red cloth and I'm going to be showing you how to blend your colours like a painting pro. So grab a brew, get comfortable and enjoy the last video of 2023. Yes, so the last video of 2023, and we're going to start off with a spare cloak I got from an old kit, and uh, I've primed this black. So once you've primed it black, I'm going to be starting with some Memphislin Red on my palette. And as you can see, the paint is pretty thin, and it's going to take me quite a few layers to build up to a full opaque base coat. Um, so basically, it was about five, five, or six layers. Um, using the hairdryer to get them dry uh, and made a brew while painting so that obviously helped with the drying time as well so just take your time move it all around um, yeah it's gonna look patchy but as you put the layers over the top it'll start getting quite opaque and solid so yeah it's all good um, you can just slap it on if you really want to but to get a nice smoother finish you, you want to sort of use as many layers as you can uh, and this is just near the end I think this was about layer four layer five so just want to give a big thank you to everybody who's supported the channel so far. There's about 75% of you all that are watching but not subscribing. So it would be amazing if you could hit that sub button, like and comment on this video and ring that bell. Uh, I really want to get to uh, 3,000 subscribers next year. So we're going to start with the first shade and that's going to be using a glaze of corn red. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting that in and I'm rinsing off my brush. And as you can see, I'm moving the pigment around. Now I want the vast majority of the pigment, as you can see, pulling that into the deeper recesses. Um, and wherever you lift the brush off the model is basically where the, the vast majority of the pigment is going to be. So you'll see me put the paint on and I'll move the brush off. And that's basically me just like rinsing the brush off. And then I come back in and I sort of move the pigment around. So for the shadows, I'm basically wanting to pull that, the paint, the pigment to the deepest points. Uh, and then you, you as you build up your, your layers and your glazes, that will get more intense. Um, and then when we start adding in the next color to sort of darken it down a lot more, we'll slowly but surely build up that shade. So speaking of which, we're going to be adding in some Incubi Darkness. Now, just add in bit at a time and you can sort of see the difference with the corn red um, already. But as you can see, I'm pulling the brush into the deepest recesses again and then coming down the line and then I'm sort of pulling that in, rinsing off the brush and moving that pigment around and it, it, it can be a slow process in all in all this taking me about an hour to paint um in total but you gotta remember that i'm also filming so that kind of slows me down as well so just keep going over backwards and forwards and just working through methodically piece by piece fold by fold um but don't worry too much if you if the blend from the red into the darker red looks a little bit iffy um, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tidying that up um, with some Memphis and Red again later on before we start the highlight process. So um, we're just getting into there. So just keep adding in more Incubi Darkness to darken it down uh, until you're happy with the shadows. And as you see, this is me really, really getting quite dark now. So I put the paint on and you can see me sort of rinsing off the brush and then feathering that glaze out because obviously there's less paint and less pigment at the end and you're kind of moving it around to get that nice transition formed so yeah right so what we're going to be doing now is once we're all happy with this we're just going to be getting Memphis and red again and this is basically a, again a glaze consistency and we're basically layering that glaze over the top of the highest points and then rinsing off the brush and then pulling the pigment up to the highest point because obviously this is going to be a highlight we want this to be on the uppermost part so basically start in the shadows and pull the brush up out of the shadows to the to the highest point and it'll just sort of smooth that transition out and then clear it up um so this is me doing it again on this side and as you can see i'm putting it all on the top and then i rinse my brush off and then i pull the brush up to the top of uh, the apex of the curve 
to sort of smooth out and create that transition. And the more and more you do this, the more and more tighter and smoother that, that will get. And you can come back in with other colors and really focus in certain points as well with stippling and, and micro glazes. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be pushing the highlights with a 50-50 mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Memphis Than Red. And it's exactly what we just did before, but we're just using a lighter color. So we put this color over the top, and then again, we rinse off our brush, and then we pull this around. Um, there is nothing, there's no real crazy secret to this. It's just a matter of learning how to glaze and feather properly uh, and getting a good consistency on your paint. So you want it to be thin, and I'm just adding water into this to thin it. There's no medium or anything like that. You can use medium if you really want to. I don't have any at the moment, um, so I'm just using good old-fashioned water. Uh, but you just thin it down so it's thin, but not like ultra-thin, so you can see through it. So again, this is me just working around and on the different parts. And you can kind of see that transition is already starting to form around the model. Um, and you can really find this, like I said earlier, if you really want to, by going back in with like different mixes of the glaze and focusing on different areas to really sort of smooth those transitions out if you really want to. And if you make any mistakes, just continually glaze over that. Um, and it'll it'll slowly get rid of it, and, which I did do earlier. I should have kept that um, part in. Um, so now using some pure Evil Sun Scarlet. Um, once you've done the, the mix a little bit, you want to get some pure Evil Sun Scarlet. And you want to be focusing this on the real uppermost parts of the folds. Um, because it's um, an org, like... It's not like armor, so you, and it doesn't really have sharp edges and lines. You want to sort of have the first sort of highlight, real highlight, which is what this is, to be a lot softer, um, so it kind of moves around the fold. Because obviously this isn't like an armor, an, an edge of armor like you would do with like a Space Marine or something. So just quite thick, but then sort of like feather it out, and you can see like I'm only really putting a line over the top of um, of the larger folds. Obviously that one's quite a larger area, so it's quite a thick um, highlight. And then just sort of feather this out and smooth the transition out from the dark into the light. And just continue working that around. And you can work this as much as you want. Uh, I've not gone as far as pure Evil Sun Scout on the top. Um, it, I'm kind of just, it's, it's there, but it's not like proper full Evil Sun Scarlet at this stage. So once we you're happy where you are, now we're going to start the proper edge highlighting. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Evil Sun Scarlet as an edge highlight. So this is the reason why I've not gone um, completely up to Evil Sun with the, the glazes. You can, but this is a little bit um, less diluted than what the paint is what we've been um, using previously. And it's basically just a simple edge highlight to pick out the raised points and all the edges and the little folds and creases and things like that. So just slowly work your way around. I'm using um, a Series 33 size one brush at this point. Uh, before that, I was using a size two. So, you know, you can do this with even a larger brush if you really wanted to, but this has got a pretty decent point on it. That's why I'm using that. Uh, and as you can see, I'm, I'm obviously picking out all of the edges and the little the little sort of cracks and rips and tears and the little holes and things like that. Um, and then once you've done that, we're going to be pushing those highlights a little bit more with Troll Slayer Orange. Now, this paint has been diluted a little bit with water. It is not the best paint in the world. Um, I'm going to have to like source out another orange um, because this is, is not good. Um, I took about two or three passes over each highlight um, before I, I moved on to the next stage. But yeah, you just want to be moving around the, the cloak and picking out the sharpest points. And again, this is an armor, so try to keep them like as, as, as smooth as you want. And this is why multiple passes will sort of build up that color and that transition. And um, yeah, so this is me again coming back in sort of like trying to sort of make it a little bit more opaque because like Troll Slayer Orange is such a nightmare to use. But we have to persist because it's it's not a bad color when it comes to highlighting um, red reds and, and cloaks and stuff like that. So, and again, round at the bottom, 
just so you get kind of see all the different transitions as well between the the shadows and the, the highlights and you know i think that view there really sort of makes it pop and it's really really good um so finally what you're going to be doing is the final edge highlight which is going to be using tau light ochre uh, again thin down with a little bit of water and you're basically wanting this to be nothing more than on the most extreme prominent points of the folds so as you can see just there there's the little bit at the top um and there's a couple of little bits on the sort of like the top parts of the the bottom folds you, you you sort of just this is sort of like your extreme final highlight this is kind of going to make it pop uh and really sort of make those areas stand out a lot more um and so just take your time and if you have if you ever do make a mistake while you're doing these highlights just go back to your previous stage and you'll be able to go over it and you're gonna like smooth it all out and clean it out and then that's it done that's that's the cloak done so i hope you enjoyed this video um this is the, the last video for 2023 and i hope you have an amazing christmas and um and a new year and i will see you in the next one please subscribe like this video drop me a comment and also feel free to check out my members area and i'll see you next year people goodbye for now